Hey there, how's everybody doing? Mr. Chu here, and let's talk about some more SAT problems. So we are working in Module 2. I've already completed Module 1, so you can check out all of those 27 problems in 13 different short videos and one long video by clicking on a playlist for the Module 1 SAT test prep problems on my YouTube channel. So let's get started with video nine, module two. So it's problems 21 and 22. Review the videos for module one review problems, one to 27 are in a playlist. All of those review videos are on my YouTube channel. All these problems have been released by the college board for review for these important hard tests. Some are harder than others, and I will say that problems 21 and 22 in this video are more difficult and time than most of the other problems that I have made videos for. So all these problems contain or require background knowledge from algebra, geometry, and other math class material that you did in high school. Therefore, the topics will vary from one question to the next, and I do not list them in any order other than what order they came on the practice problems. Like this video if it's helpful. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and X, and I've got more math help videos on that YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. There is a link over here in the corner that you can click on. If you're watching this on a computer, if you're watching on a device, it may be after the video, but please subscribe. If you have math questions for Mr. Chu, for me, that you maybe you don't want to ask your regular math teacher or you forgot to ask your math teacher, email me at askmrchu at gmail.com and I will get back with you and maybe make a video for you. Now let's get to these difficult problems. All right, see, we have a system of equations here. What makes this difficult? We don't have a value here for this constant. We don't have A, and they want you to find it. So they're saying that A is a positive constant, so it's positive. And the system has exactly one distinct real solution. That's important. It has one solution. Well, this system is going to be a parabola, that second one, and a line. And they're saying that it has one solution where they intersect. So well, now let's just get to it. We're going to use the discriminant after we substitute the negative 1.5 in for the y and then move that negative 1.5 to the other side. So if you didn't pause this, go ahead and pause it. I've given you a head start now. I forgot to tell you to pause it. Go ahead and pause it and get out a piece of paper and start doing what I'm doing here. See if you can remember what the discriminant meant from Algebra and Algebra 2. All right, so I need to move this negative 1.5 from the left over to the right. And you do that by using an inverse operation, the addition property of equality, by adding 1.5 to both sides. You get a zero on the left, and on the right, you're just getting that quadratic plus 1.5. So we don't know what that is, and this is what makes us a little confusing, but we can work from there now. So let's review what the discriminant means. Remember, it shows the number of x-intercepts. If d is greater than 0, there are no x-intercepts. If d, or the discriminant's value, is 0, then there's one x-intercept. And if D is greater than zero, I had an O there, and I need to put a zero there, then there's two x-intercepts. Well, what does the problem say up here? The problem up here says there's one distinct solution. So if there's one x-intercept, there's one distinct solution, which means we can say the discriminant equals zero, or yeah, equals zero. This function has one distinct root, the discriminant zero, so I set the discriminant equal to zero and solve for A. Wow, this has been a lot of work. We're already five minutes into this. 
So a quadratic equation in the form of 0 equals, and then it's just got your x squared plus your x plus your r, has one distinct root, distinct root if, with two f's means if and only if, the discriminant d equals 0. So I can set the discriminant, which is going to be q squared minus 4pr, when you have it set up like this. Now I know they usually use a's and b's in your algebra class when they are talking about this, but it would have said ax squared minus 4ab. We're not using a's because it's asking you to solve for a over here, and I didn't want to make it any more confusing than what it is. So I've got my quadratic equation here. My p is going to equal 1. It says minus negative 1. But it equals 1. My q equals 8. Do you see how my p is in front of my x squared? Well, there's nothing in front of my x squared, but that's 1 times x squared. That's why it's 1. My q is going to be 8 because there's an 8 in front of the x. But look, the r is a plus 1.5. That's where this got a little bit confusing. So the discriminant of this equation, q squared minus 4pr equals 0, I'm going to substitute the values I have up here for p, q, and r. And I get 8 squared. is q squared, 8 squared, minus my 4, times the p, which is 1, times the r, which is a plus 1.5, and we know that's equal to 0 because it has one distinct root. So, my a squared minus 4 times 1 times a plus 1.5 in parentheses equals 0. Simplifies to 8 squared is 64. 4 times 1 is 4. Now I'm going to use the distributive property. You remember the distributive property? It says that I can take and multiply the 4 times the A, and then the 4 times 1.5. And don't forget that 4 is a negative 4. If you forget that, you're going to miss the problem. So I have 64 minus 4a minus 4.1.5 is 6 equals 0. I'm going to move my picture over because I've got some equations here I need to reveal. So 64 minus 6 is 58 minus 4a equals 0. Now I'm going to use the addition property of equality to add 4a to both sides and it going to cancel out minus 4a plus 4a on the left will give me 58 equals 4a. Now I have to find out what 1a is, so I use the division property of equality to divide both sides by 4, and 4 over 4 is 1, and then I take my 58 and divide that by 4 to get 58 fourths, which is reduced to 29 halves, which equals a. So A equals 29 halves or 14.5. Wow, that was almost a nine-minute solution. So the problems do get difficult, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to see how to work it. Now you can pause for 22, see if you can work it out. We're given a function here, and it happens to be a cubic if you would multiply these uh, three binomials. They wrote it out in the product of three binomials. The function f is given, which table of values represents y equals f of x minus 3. So what they did, they translated this three units down. And they're going to want to know which one, which of these satisfies it. So you're going to have to take and try all of these until you find one that works. Okay? So, first of all, we have to substitute f of x equals these three in y equals f of x minus 3. 
So I'm going to put this function right here using the substitution property of equality. So the y will be written equals, and then right here, instead of f of x, I'm doing putting these three binomials, and then I have to subtract three. And that is my equation that has been translated. So now I go up here into a, and I say, all right, for x equals negative six, I plug it in. So I'm going to plug a negative 6 here, and here, and here, subtract 3 from it, plug my negative 6 in, and see if I get my negative 9. So this is just substituting. Now look what's happening here. The negative 6 plus 6 is going to be a 0, and 0 times anything times anything is going to be 0 minus 3, which is negative 3, but what does it say it equals? Negative 9. What does that x mean? It means that that cannot be the solution. I can stop right there because I found one that didn't work. So I don't have to go on for a. Now for b. Substitute that first value. And you notice that in all of them, it's got the same x values. So I'm plugging the same things in for x. It's just giving me different y's is what it amounts to. Okay? So That'll speed us up a little bit. On the first value, we get um, we get zero times negative one times negative ten again, and we know that equals negative three, and that is true. So we give that a check mark. So we're in the running now. We got to try now the negative five. So substitute that in. Now we're going to get different numbers. I'm going to get the zero right here now instead of in the first one. But it's still going to be zero because we're multiplying and then still giving me a negative three. Well, it gave me a negative three there. So, yep, still in the running. Now we substitute a four in. So if we substitute a 4 in, we still get a 0, but it's right here this time. And then 0 times these two numbers is still going to be 0. Minus 3 is negative 3. It's right, too. So B is in the running. But in some questions, there will be more than one right answer. So let's see if C works. So for C, we have... That same negative 6 plugged in, and it's saying that we're going to get a negative 3. Well, do you see how we get the 0 here? So, yeah, we're in the running because negative 3 equals negative 3. All right. Now we go to the second one. So we tried the negative 6, and it gave us a negative 3. Now we're trying the negative 5. Well, what do you think? What's your guess? Well, we already put a negative 5 in there, and we got a negative 3. Remember when we did that up above? We did it correctly. So we know that that is not the answer. Well, if that one is not the answer as well, what do we know? We know that we can rule out C. So I'll put the X through it since we have that circle with the X in it. And now we go to D to see if D can be that possible solution. So we substitute the negative 6 in, and it's telling me we're going to get a positive 3. But we know that's not true, because we got a negative 3. So do we have to do any more? No. That tells us, then, that B is the correct answer. Now, let's just stop one little second and just talk for a minute. So B is the correct answer. Can you use logic instead of substituting all the values? Well, let's see if we can use logic here. Go ahead and just move this out of the way. If you look at all the possibilities, I see that they all have the same X values, 
but they have different y values, but B and D have the same y value. Now, if I'm putting a negative 6 in here, we know that'll be a 0. Then we put the negative 5, that'll be a 0. Then we put the 4, that'll be a 0. And since we're subtracting 3 from it, it has to be negative 3, which tells you that would be B. Now, sometimes you can't figure that out, and you've got to just substitute all of them. All right? So, we know that only one of them would give us those zeros, and subtracting three would give us a negative three. So, yes, that was a long problem. We're already 15 and a half minutes into this. So, let's go ahead and wind this baby down, then. Make sure you follow me on it. TikTok, Instagram, X, Facebook. I've got lots of videos. A link to the Module 1 problems with all 27 has 14 different videos. And Module 2, this is number 9 in that set. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There'll be a link over here in the edge on the right bottom if you're on a computer, below if you're on your device. Make sure that you send any math questions to askmrchu at gmail.com. Help me spread the word that Mr. Chu will help students with math questions. I use videos for my curriculum in bare algebra, back geometry, tray arithmetic, and pre-algebra. I do another series called Math Minutes, and I also have these SAT test preps. I'll see you in the next video, and before we go, remember to spread the word. I am Mr. Chu, and I want to help you with your math. See you in the next video.